is January 3rd. I'm going to read uh, Library 3 Vel Judorum, but first I'm going to read a simple little article that explains its value, which is called Library 3 Vel Judorum as a Tool for Self-Control. When using magic, being able to control one's primary tool, oneself, with all the different sides and features one has is very important. By being able to harness one's whole essence, including the mind, body, and language, to the working at hand gives the magic worker a more powerful set of tools than what a mage of less self-control self and weaker self-awareness has. One method of training yourself to be more effective for magic is to use Aleister Crowley's Liber III Veljigorum as your tool. At the same time, you are also able to get yourself more into your own control, thinking what you are saying and doing, as well as controlling your thought patterns. Judorum, or the Book of the Yoke, divides the fields to be trained into three beasts, the unicorn, the horse, and the ox. All these should be yoked in a triple yoke that is governed by one whip, instead of having them run, running wildly. Judorum can be used not only as a standalone practice, but also as a part of preparing for larger workings, especially before starting more persevering and continuous operations requiring not only self-control, but also self-awareness. For people, or for example, larger invocation or evocation projects are starting to learn a new system and technique. As a standalone practice, Judorum Welts, uh, works well as a periodical regaining of self-control and a working intended to be compared to the previous results of practicing uh, the Liber 3. It can also be used as a changing point between one phase of life and another to create an intermediate period of no phase devoted to self-contemplation in preparation for the next phase. Furthermore, this versatile exercise can be used to uh, pull oneself back together when practicing has turned sloppy, sloppy, and to stop a working that has started to pall on you or is going badly, in order to study possible reasons for things not going the way they're expected to go. References towards being wild and unruly can be interpreted as pointing out how automated people usually are in their day-to-day -day life. Their speech is littered with unnecessary refrains like, you know, and or simpler, um, as well as, uh, as well as with its expressions and points of view. Certain stimuli tr uh, trigger always the same kind of response without thinking. Even manners repeat the same habits. You sit down and lift one knee over the other, fidget with your pen, your hair. All in all, there are many kinds of mannerisms you don't usually pay, attention, pay any attention to. Thoughts are ruled uh, by old and t tried trains of thoughts and, str uh, and strong but often unquestioned ideas of uh, who I am and how I usually do things. Judorum's exercises make you pay attention to your own actions. Remove what you've deemed unnecessary. Map yourself and train yourself to be your own master. Each of the exercises lasts a week minimum. And in addition to the exercises given in Liber 3, Crowley advises you to make up your own exercises. Judorum isn't a quick route to magical innovations or stronger capabilities, and the results gained vary accordingly to the goal set by each practitioner. However, the exercises do help along the way. There's no use in starting an exercise and then stopping in the middle of it, even though you might feel like you weren't getting, gaining anything from it. Even though the changes would be small and even unnoticeable, in the long run, the only one that really matters, they can be remarkable. The unicorn symbolizes the speech. Rule thy speech. With the speech, another communication uh, exercise, you start by picking a target, which is then removed from use of language. In the first form of this exercise, you'll avoid a word you commonly use, for example, and, but, or the. In the second, you'll avoid using a certain language. In the third one, what's being removed is self, the every pronoun and adjective referring to the person. With each of, the, with each, with each of these, you will not simply miss the word to avoid, you'll work your way around it. The level of difficulty can be fine-tuned from very easy uh, to such difficulty where you need to shift the gear of your brain completely very easy, too easy uh, to be of any practical use, and also too easy too easy to be in accordance to the spirit of Jugorum would be, say, to choose to remove e, I or we, and then communicate solely in English. On the other end of the scale would be removing a whole set of concepts or means of expression to your speech. In any case, you should re reconstruct the thought patterns affecting speech and really pay attention to what you are about to say or write before the words get out of your mind. The target should be a word, letter, or concept, like I, you are using constantly, maybe even too often, such as like or um. 
for this experience to be of use to you, do, do communicate with people as much as you usually do. Spending a week alone and in silence gets you off easy, but you won't gain anything from it. While following the part of uh, Judorum, you'll notice how much you are actually using a certain expression in your daily life without actually thinking about it. At the same time, you'll likely start noticing other people's method, uh, methods of communications um, before, better than before. How much others uh, are overusing the expression you are avoiding, which is naturally where your attention will most likely be concentrating on in others, and how much of their communication is automated. Insights upon yourself and finding new points of view are rather common byproducts from doing Judorum. The overall results will vary according to the exercise and the practitioner. My own standard set, standards set for myself when doing a communication exercise, be it Judorum or Judorum based, is that people who are not aware of the exercise going on would not notice anything being different from normal. Going around the target should, be, should happen skillfully enough to not draw any attention towards itself. The slightly longer pauses in speech can be noticed, but it shouldn't be too obvious as to get people asking questions. Generally speaking, you'll return to your normal language usage after the exercise. Exceptions from this rule are the occasions when the target has been uh, those manners of speech or expressions you intended to rid yourself your speech from, completely or partly. This kind of communication exercise is a useful tool for training as language affects the mind, mind affects reality, reality affects the language, and vice versa. The horse symbolizes the actions. Rule thine action. The examples given in Liber 3 point your attention to ordinary, everyday gestures and motions, the kind of, of which you don't usually pay any attention to. The first example advises avoiding lifting your left arm above your waist. The second mention, mentions avoiding crossing your legs. As the gestures are so common, controlling them can be surprisingly difficult. Our bodies live their own lives, and small, and small everyday motions come naturally. When you're thinking, your fingers may fidget with your pen. When you sit down, you'll adjust yourself to your favorite position. When you're feeling puzzled, you may start running your fingers through your hair. When your spouse walks by, you may give them a little pat on his bum, etc. Being, being aware of your own gestures brings alone an extra loop of thinking to your daily life. Even when there is, even when there is uh, only one gesture you are focusing on avoiding. When you're focusing on gestures that are, absolute, are usually controlled not by thought but come from your spine, you're also training your mind to more, be more focus, focused and alert. You can use the horse training part of Judorum to train yourself out of addictions and other so-called bad habits, but the results may be considerably weaker than using the same exercise for calling out automatic gestures for a week or more. If you're a caffeine addict, addict uh, a cup of coffee may well feel worth the punishment you get from slipping. When it comes to bad habits, you're usually aware of them even before the exercise, so focusing your mind to concentrate on something you don't usually think about doesn't happen. This exercise of gestures or motions helps to heighten awareness of your own body and to train it to act more in accordance to your will. Extending your consciousness to the smallest gestures of your body fine-tunes not only your mind, but also your body to be better uh, in using magic. Many rituals include certain gestures and signs which aren't there only to uh, bring flamboyance to the ritual and to help the mage to move from one point to another. By fine-tuning your mind to be more aware of your body, you can gain more understanding of these gestures and make them more meaningful to, for you. You aren't just doing the gestures or signs, you're starting to be more aware of them and experience their meanings on a practical level. Instead of just reading the meaning of a gesture from a book and thinking in some level of your consciousness the meaning of it, uh, meaning of it while doing it, furthermore, gestures and signs used in rituals may appear in your dreams while doing this exercise, giving you more information about themselves, possibly providing you with better insight than before. The ox symbolizes the thoughts. Rule thy thought. Jugorum includes two different or differing exercises for training the mind. The first one is similar to those controlling speech and action. You're, you are avoiding thinking about a certain subject and everything connected with it. You're advised to pick a target you're usually thinking about rather often, something that sensory input or other people's conversations stir in your mind frequently. The other example differs from the earlier ones. The one advises uh, you to create two different clearly different personalities, A and B, for yourself. What personality is on is defined with some type of tool, for example by switching the ring from one finger to another. The created personality should be distinct, with the main features 
being connected to the basic needs of life. When the ring is on person A's finger, you shouldn't let any person B's thoughts to enter your mind and vice versa. In Crowley's example, person A is passionate, skilled in Kabbalah, a vegetarian and reactionary politician. Person B, in turn, is an ascetic thinker, occupied with work and family, eats meat and uh, a prog progressive politician. You can choose the opposites better suiting yourself by looking at everyday issues important to you and then dividing your opinions in two camps. In effect, you can choose between a paradox and a paradigm. The paradox is created by completely avoiding thinking about something, but still being aware of it. The paradigm is connected to controlling the paradigms of two different personalities without unbalancing your own mind. The mind is the most important tool of the mage, so training it shouldn't be considered of minor importance. Looking closer at the example exercises given by Crowley, you can spot benefits of doing the ox part of Judorum to your magic usage. Shutting a certain subject out of your mind trains yourself to be able to shut out the reality, shut out of the re reality of the your mind, the thoughts, thought patterns, and frames of mind that could be negative from the point of view of your different magical work workings. Having trained with working with two different eyes, uh, you may be able to put on your ma mages personality when you switch from everyday reality to the reality of magic use, helping with the change of the state of consciousness for those who do not differentiate between everyday life and magic uh, too. With the paradigm exercise, you can also uh, allow your more skeptical sides to exist without disturbing the usage and results of magic. You do not need to put uh, coal your skepticism. That doesn't pay. It's a useful tool when you can allow it to manifest separately from the strong belief in magic while practicing. Tools of control. Early on, uh, I mentioned the punishment you get from slipping. The main tool of control in Jugorum is very primitive physical punishment you're giving yourself. In addition to this, you should keep a diary on your exercise. The advice uh, given by Crowley is grim. On each occasion you slip to say, do, think, that which you have sworn to avoid, cut yourself sharply on the wrist or arm with a razor blade. Advancement is monitored in two ways. Your arm then serves you both as a warning and a record. You should write down your daily practices until you are perfectly vigilant at all times. Uh, perfectly vigilant. Th that is, no avoidable words should come from your lips or your pen, no forbidden gestures from your body, no uprooted thoughts should enter your mind. Razor blade as a punishment is very demanding, and most people who do Jugorum exercises aren't using it. The most common form of punishment seems to be a rubber band around the wrist. When you slip, you snap the rubber band hard. I've used that method, and while doing my, e my first exercise, I sometimes considered switching to the razor blade method as a less painful option. Other methods I've heard uh, or read about include a pocket-sized gizmo, which gives electric shocks, slapping yourselves on the cheek, and one apparently very effective method, probably due to the embarrassment factor involved, uh, is of dropping down to do push-ups no matter where you happen to be. Some consider the embarrassment you get from knowing you've slipped to be punishment enough. If you choose to use the rubber band or other methods of punishment that do not leave marks on your skin, the bookkeeping effect uh, or counting the number of mistakes from your own skin and comparing different times of doing, doing Judorum with others is lost. The rubber band will leave red marks, but they are hard to even, or even impossible to count. However, you can take to carrying a pen and drawing a line on your arm after each punishment. You can then mark down the lines into your diary daily and keep an eye on your development this way. So, yeah, that's just a, a rundown of how Judorum is used, the philosophy, philosophy behind it. I personally wouldn't advise the, the razor blades, um, but like you said, you wouldn't um, have that have that history of knowing. My personal uh, thing, I think Judorm is very useful because we all like to say like we all like to say like and um when we're thinking about speaking. Uh, <laughs> see, and I think. That would be a good practice to be in for something like that. It's also, like they said, for addiction or for bad habits. If you have ticks or, uh, like, you know, triggers, um, ticks and all that, this would definitely be a good thing for that. Um, so I will now read the actual text of Liber 3, Veljugorm. Behold the yoke upon the neck of the oxen. 
Is it not thereby that the field shall be plowed? The yoke is heavy, but joineth together them that are separate. Glory to Nui, and to Hadi, and to him that hath given us the symbol of the rosy cross. Glory unto the Lord of the word Abrahadabra, and glory unto him that hath given us the symbol of the Ankh, and the cross within the circle. Three are the beasts wherewith thou must plow the field, the unicorn, the horse, and the ox. In these thou, uh, thou yoke, in a triple yoke that is governed by one whip. Now these beasts run wildly upon the earth, and are not easily obedient to man. Nothing shall be said here of Cerberus, that the great beast of hell, that is every one of these and all of these, even as Athanasius uh, hath foreshadowed. For this matter, dealing with Kronzon, is not of Tifereth without, but Tifereth within. The unicorn is speech. Man, rule thy speech. How shalt thou master the sun, and answer the magician at the right hand uh, gateway of the crown. Here are our practices. Each may last for a week or more. A. Avoid using some common word such as and or the or but. Use a paraphrase. B. Avoid using some letter of the alphabet such as T or S or M. Use a paraphrase. C. Avoid using the pronouns and adjectives of the first person. Use a paraphrase. Of thine own ingenium devise others. 2. On each occasion that thou art betrayed into saying that thou art sworn to avoid, cut thyself sharply upon the wrists or forearm with, with, with a razor, even as thou shalt, uh, shouldst be, beat a disobedient dog. Feareth not the unicorn, the claws and teeth of the lion? Uh, 3. Thine, honor, thine arm then serveth thee both for a warning and a record. Thou shalt write down thy daily progress in these practices, until... Thou art perfectly vigilant at all times over the least word that slippeth from thy tongue. Thus bind thyself, and thou shalt forever be free. The horse is action. Man, rule thine action. How else shalt thou master the father, and answer the fool at the left-hand gateway of the crown? Here are the practices. Each may last a week or more. A. Avoid lifting the arm above the waist. B. Avoid crossing the legs. Of thine own ingenium devise others. 2. On each occasion that thou art betrayed into doing that uh, thou art sworn to avoid, cut thyself sharply upon the wrist or forearm with a razor, even as thou shouldst be beat a disobedient dog. Feareth not the horse the teeth of the camel. 3. Thine arm that then serveth thee both for a warning and for a record. Thou shalt write down thy daily progress in these practices, until thou art perfectly vigilant at all times over the least action and, uh, that slippeth from the least of thy fingers. Thus bind thyself, and thou shalt forever be free. The ox is thought. Man, rule thy thought. How else uh, shalt thou, thou master the Holy Spirit, and answer the high priest in the middle gateway of, of the crown? Here are the practices, each may last a week or more. A. Avoid thinking of a definite subject and all things connected with it, and let that subject be one with com commonly, uh, which commonly occupies much of thy thought being frequently stimulated by sense perceptions or the conversations of other, others. B. By some device such as the changing of thy ring from one finger to another, create in thyself two personalities, the thoughts of one being within entirely different limits from uh, that of the other, the common ground being of necessities of life. Uh, in the footnote it says, for instance, let a man uh, be of strong passion, skilled in the Kabbalah, a vegetarian, and a keen reactionary politician. Let B, a bloodless and ascetic thinker, occupied with business and family cares, an eater of meat, and a keen progressive politician. Let no thought proper to A arise when the ring is on B finger and vice versa. Of thine own ingenium devise others. Two, on each occasion uh, that thou art betrayed into thinking that thou art sworn to avoid, um, cut thyself sharply upon the wrist or forearm with a razor, even as thou shouldst be a disobedient dog. Feareth not the ox, the, uh, the goad of the plowman. 3. Thine arm then serves thee both as a warning and a record. Thou shalt write down thy daily progress in these practices, until thou art perfectly vigilant at all times over the least thought that ariseth in the brain. Thus bind thyself, and thou shalt forever be free.